for their life circumstances and to stay abreast of science as your guide to treatment. And you will not be able to ignore the broader pressures on the medical establishment, whether they're economic or financial, legal, or sadly, political. That's why I say that medicine, for you, has to be more than an avocation. It is a stirring, a life of selfless dedication, and it won't be easy. But I know that you know that already, and you've made a very deliberate and conscious choice, not just of medicine, but also of Q. U. Netter. And I believe it's a terrific choice. At Q. U. Netter, you'll have the added advantage of learning and training in an interdisciplinary environment. Unlike most medical schools, Q. U. Netter sits under the same roof as our schools of nursing and health sciences. You'll learn in a healthcare setting that brings you to work together across fields for the benefit of patients to take care of the whole person through collaborative healthcare alongside future nurses, PAs, occupational and physical therapists, imaging technologists, and many more. You'll benefit from the added advantage of our comprehensive partnership with Hartford Healthcare. Last year, Quinnipiac and HHC, Hartford Healthcare, entered a transformative university-wide partnership to build the healthcare workforce of tomorrow to grow student pipelines across a wide range of professions and to address long-term talent needs for the state of Connecticut and beyond. A key feature of the partnership with HHC is the access you will have to their state-of-the-art facilities, a state-of-the-art simulation center and other medical specialty areas. Importantly, you'll also have exposure to a wide range of diverse patients and communities, which is essential for the good of society as we strive to improve equity and access to health care across communities. The sad truth is that according to the recent Healthy People 2030 report from the US Department of Health and Human Services, one in 10 Americans does not have health insurance. One in 10. This has far-reaching impacts from physical and mental health to employment and educational access to food and housing insecurity to family structures. We know that one of the biggest barriers to reducing health inequities is physician shortages. The American Association of Medical Colleges projects that the U.S. could be short by up to 180,000 physicians by 2034, which is kind of when we think you'll really get out there. You are needed. Your future patients of all backgrounds and lived experiences need you. As a society, we are so grateful that you have chosen this journey. And today is an unforgettable milestone that begins that formal journey for you as a physician. The white coat ceremony isn't just a timeless tradition. The white coat ceremony means that you're accepting the bedrock values of medicine, your selfless devotion to the lives of others, your ethos of bringing the best scientific evidence into practice, your compassion and human touch to alleviate the fears and concerns of patients, and the poignant comfort needed when a family is at risk of losing a loved one. We have selected you very carefully and we have great confidence in your future impact as a caring, informed, scientifically driven physician with a passion to minister to the whole person. And if the past is prologue to the future, you are on your way to great successes, not just because of your backgrounds, but this past spring, your predecessors in the QU Netta class of 2023 matched with residency programs all across the country in 16 different specialties and subspecialties, including emergency medicine, family medicine, neurology, obstetrics, gynecology, orthopedic surgery, and pediatrics. The residency spanned 25 states, including 13 here in Connecticut. So onward, as you begin the noble practice of medicine, congratulations, good luck, and Godspeed.
Good afternoon. As Dean of the QU Netter School of Medicine, it's my pleasure to again welcome the class of 2027, along with their family, friends, and loved ones, as we celebrate their official entrance into the profession of medicine. <laughs> Moments such as today's white coat ceremony in which we elevate humanism as the core value of healthcare, remind us of why we're here, who we are, and who we aspire to be. The gold foundation, which has been instrumental to the development of the white coat ceremony, has developed the acronym CARES, C-A-R-E-S, to describe the attributes of a humanistic healthcare professional. These include collaboration and compassion, altruism, respect and resilience, empathy and service. Now in the current healthcare landscape that we're in today, I believe it's imperative that the E signify not only empathy, but also equity. Indeed, equitable healthcare is humanistic healthcare. Our school's commitment to fostering humanism in medicine is rooted in the art of our namesake, Dr. Frank H. Netter. His renowned anatomical illustrations were crafted with a striking level of empathy and humanity. You see, Dr. Netter compassionately illustrated disease processes as life challenges faced by individual patients. Just as his art pays respect to the complexity and uniqueness of each patient, so too does our patient-centered model of medical education. To our students, today we officially welcome you into the practice of medicine. We also warmly welcome you into a growing family of QU Netter physicians who are committed to painting a brighter and more equitable healthcare future for all, one brushstroke and one patient at a time. As you don your white coats today and every day forward, I'd like to remind you to also cloak yourselves in these CARES attributes, compassion and collaboration, altruism, respect and resilience, empathy and equity, as well as service. And I also ask you to really embody these attributes in your words and actions with your patients, your peers, and the communities in which you serve. Good luck and Godspeed. <clears throat> this is the end of my prepared remarks, but just off the cuff and from the heart, I have to say, having in interacted with this class this week, I just want to say to everyone here that the class of 2027 is simply heaven and that they've got this. Congratulations. It's now my pleasure to welcome to the podium Dr. Renu Boatwright, our Assistant Dean for Student Affairs. Thank you so much, Dean Bozell. Uh, good afternoon. It's my privilege to introduce Dr. Nancy Rockmore Angoff as our 2024 QU Netter School of Medicine White Coat keynote speaker. Dr. Angoff exemplifies the CARES attributes that we just heard. She devoted her career to the mentorship and the guidance of others, particularly learners in healthcare. After graduating from Case Western Reserve University, Dr. Angoff taught junior high English while earning a master's degree in education with a concentration in guidance and counseling. She later advanced her interest in bioethics by earning a master's in public health at Yale University before receiving her medical degree, cum laude, at Yale School of Medicine. Dr. Angoff competed, completed her residency in internal medicine at Yale New Haven Hospital in New Haven, where she sparked her interest in the care of patients with HIV, a population she continued to serve through intense social and medical shifts for over th about 30 years. She then served also as the Associate Dean of Student Affairs at the Yale School of Medicine for 23 years, 
where she shepherded multiple white coat ceremony cohorts through to caring physicians, and along her way, shaped medical education as a leader in her school and in the field overall. Currently, Dr. Engoff continues to advance this storied career as a caring physician, dedicated to the support of learners and patients, but with a different bent. Combining her skills in the arts and in medicine, she now acts as a standardized patient um, at both Quinnipiac and Yale. Incorporating her wealth of patient experiences, Dr. Engoff pushes her current students uh, by acting out challenging patient encounters in the hope to improve uh, her students' interactions with their future real patients. Throughout her career, Dr. Engoff has modeled herself as a caring physician dedicated to that support of learners and patients, particularly those most vulnerable. I myself count her as a mentor, as a friend, and it is thereby my great pleasure to welcome Dr. Engoff to the stage. I'm incredibly honored today to address you, the Frank H. Netter MD School of Medicine class of 2027, as well as your parents and friends, your teachers, deans and administrators, President Olian, a heartfelt thank you for this opportunity and to Dean Boatwright for that kind introduction. I may, I warn you, cry during this because I am incredibly moved by the milestone that you are undertaking. Um, but that's a different topic. That's for another time. I just want you to be aware. I believe in stories and in telling stories. I see the practice of medicine as a huge, unfinished tapestry made up of millions of colorful threads of stories, stories of patients, providers, scientists, discoveries, noble acts, sacrifices. This is a tapestry to which you are about to add your stories. I will start by telling a bit about mine and end with yours, with attention paid in the middle to the stories of patients. I was an atypical medical student. I grew up at a time and in a family when a woman was much less likely to become a physician and more likely to marry one, which I did. Well, I married a man who was to become a physician and I was to become an English teacher fulfilling my mother's dream. My mother, who only graduated from high school, believed that teaching was the perfect profession for a woman, enabling her to have the same schedule as her children. Being an English teacher came in handy in order to support us while my husband went to medical school and while I fantasized about doing what he was doing. Tell me what you did today, I pleaded when he came home from the hospital, tired from a day immersed in the lives and stories of others. A day I could only dream about. Two children, two master's degrees, and a job with the Yale Institutional Review Board later, as well as three and a half years of pre-med courses, and I could learn that his day of fatigue was way more preferable than my day of fatigue. I like to say that I went through internship twice, once as the wife of an intern and once many years later as the intern. Being an intern myself was much better. It was much harder being the partner at home, waiting, waiting, remember that if you have a partner at home. Paradoxically, there's nothing more invigorating than the fatigue that comes after a long day of learning and making a difference in someone's life and story. I tell you this so that you can understand how much it has meant to me to become a physician. 
I still find it incredible that I was permitted to learn the secrets of medicine, that I was allowed this extraordinary privilege of caring for patients and relieving suffering and being part of stories that were awe-inspiring, but admittedly at times soul-crushing. What does it mean to enter the room and the life of a person who entrusts you with their worries and fears and hopes? And what does it mean at this moment for you to consider how to go about earning that trust? It could be overwhelming. But I'm here to tell you that it need not be. You just start with one step at a time, one story at a time, and let's begin with your story. There's a mirror in your left white coat pocket. Please take it out. If you haven't unwrapped it yet, you can, but please don't put the wrapping on the floor, put it back in your coat. I'll wait a minute so you can unwrap. Look at it. Look hard. Think about who you see. Think about where you came from, your family, your home, your neighborhood, your church or mosque or temple, your neighbors, your teachers, your doctors, nurses, your grocery store, or where your family got food or gardened, your grandparents and where they grew up, the languages you spoke or they spoke, the people who believed in you or who challenged you, the things that you enjoy doing and that give you pleasure, Think about the clothes that you wear and the clothes that your relatives wear and the foods that you eat and your hopes and dreams and fears. And then think that you were or are or will be a patient and you did or do or will need a physician who sees all of you the way you see yourself in that little mirror. And then promise that you will be that physician for your patients. You can put it down for now. Your story as an emerging physician is developing. You are crossing a bridge. On this side of the bridge, you stand side by side with your future patients. You wear the clothes of patients, at least until today when you put on your white coat. You speak the language of patients, maybe with a bit more knowledge of biology and chemistry thrown in, but as you cross that bridge, you will learn the language of physicians. Little by little, even insidiously, your language will change. The chest will become the thorax in anatomy class. A cabbage will stop being a vegetable and become an acronym for coronary artery bypass graft. Your clothes will change too, to scrubs and booties and white coats and masks and face shields. And when you reach the other side of the bridge, you will be a physician and you will identify as a physician. But I ask you today to never forget how it feels to be on this side of the bridge. Never forget the language of the patient. To your patient who has clogged coronary arteries, a cabbage will still be a vegetable. 
In a recent JAMA article, it was pointed out that clear communication is required to reduce health care inequities. I believe that clear communication is the key to the physician-patient relationship. And the secret to being a good physician is to cherish that relationship. One cannot be a physician without patients. One-to-one, face-to-face, heart-to-heart, and we are also in relationship with our colleagues, with nurses and clergy and social workers and dietitians and pharmacists and all the other professionals on our team who help us in our relationships with our patients. I became a physician during the AIDS epidemic at a time when doctors were saying that they would not put themselves at risk, when fear of contracting AIDS kept them from entering patients' rooms. Recent medical school graduates became physicians during the COVID pandemic when they donned masks and plastic shields and paper gowns and communicated through devices, sometimes through barriers and doorways, you may face other challenges to relationship, but you must confront those challenges and remember that one cannot be a physician without relationship. How many times did I stand outside a patient's room feeling vulnerable and wondering if I would know enough, if I would help or hurt, only to open the door to find a person with a story they were eager to tell me, that just listening was helping that they believed in me, which made me believe in myself. A person, just a person, more vulnerable than I. As a medical student, one does feel vulnerable. And I urge you not to run from it, but to embrace it and try to use that vulnerability in understanding others. A medical student is so afraid of missing something. The heart murmur, the breast lump. But I can assure you that your patient is more vulnerable than you and is more afraid that you will find that heart murmur or that breast lump. Today you receive a white coat a symbol, an emblem of the professional journey you are about to begin over that bridge. But make no mistake, it is not the coat that qualifies you for that journey. The necessary qualities you already possess. You come here to the Frank H. Netter MD School of Medicine already with curiosity, love of learning, empathy, compassion, common sense, a desire to further the boundaries of scientific knowledge, a drive to make a difference in the stories of medicine, to change systems that limit equity, accessibility, and opportunity, to open your hearts to the needs of others and to fight for those needs while learning to balance your own needs. These qualities are in you. They are part of the you you bring to Netter and the threads that you will add to the tapestry of the practice of medicine. At the same time, you will have to come to terms with the power that the white coat does confer. It does legitimize your voice. That responsibility is awesome. You will have to decide if and how and on what issues you choose to speak. Being a physician and even 
a medical student, offers an incredible platform, and you will need to consider how you will use yours. Your journey will not be without challenges. I will name just a few that I can foresee. First is the increasing role of technology, especially of artificial intelligence, and how to incorporate it safely, effectively, and beneficially into the practice of medicine. No matter how attractive AI may be, you must fight against turning away from the patient and understanding their personal story and health goals. You must resist the temptation to engage only with devices and data and hold on to relationships to maintain connection and caring. You will be plagued by the politicization of and legislative interference in the practice of medicine, whether around public health issues, such as vaccines and gun violence, or access to treatments, such as reproductive care, or gender-affirming care, or whatever comes next. You will be haunted by injustice and inequity in your patients' lives poverty, racism, inadequate housing and food, unsafe drinking water, lack of green space, inordinate stress on communities affect health and drive poor outcomes. These social and structural forces may seem insurmountable, but you can scale that wall and bring about meaningful change. The corporatization of the practice of medicine will affect the way that you practice and may interfere with your autonomy and your patient's autonomy to make decisions that are right for them. Your understanding of medical ethics will therefore take on outsized proportions as you progress on your journey. At times, you will feel lonely and even lost on this journey. But you must recognize that, like your patients, everyone must reach out for help and attention at one time or another. To not get professional help when needed is to deny the validity of the very profession you enter today. Start now with building community with each other. Turn to the person on your right. Turn to the person on your left. Remember those faces. You will need each other to comfort, to commiserate with, to be joyful with, and to celebrate with. Do not ever forget that the faculty at Netter is here for you. This is not a them versus us community. This is a we are in it together community. These are just a few of the challenges you will face, but you are up to the challenge. Remember, everything starts with relationship with the patient. Sometimes, silent observation with an intentional caring gaze is the critical skill called for. You already can do that. Sometimes, quiet listening, allowing time for a gathering of thoughts is what's called for. You already can do that. Sometimes, the nodding of a head is all that's needed. 
you already can do that. And sometimes, just an utterance, please tell me more, is everything. You already can do that. I'm not saying that these are all the skills you need. Certainly, you're going to have to study hard, but you already can do that, too. But they are enough to start, and you already have them. So do not be afraid to walk into that patient's room. Please, again, hold up that mirror and look at yourself. See in your face your story, the one you bring with you and tell today, and more importantly, the one you want told about you as a physician in the future when you get to the other side of the bridge. And mark today as the start of the first chapter in that story. Going forward when there are stumbles and disappointments, as there undoubtedly will be, pull out this mirror to reflect that there has also been remarkable growth and learning, as there undoubtedly will be. Welcome to the Frank H. Schneider MD School of Medicine and to the practice of medicine. Thank you, Dr. Angoff. That was a beautiful speech um, to remind us all of what y'all bring every day already and to encourage you to walk in uh, their patient room. It's now my pleasure also to welcome our student speaker. Uh, so our student speaker is Katie Trimbelak, who is a member of our class of 2024 here at the QU Netter School of Medicine. Katie is a fantastic young person, another amazing woman that I get to uh, announce to the stage. Uh, she is an exemplar fourth-year medical student who is a current member of our Gold Humanism Honor Society. And welcome, Katie. Thank you, Dr. Boatwright. So as Dr. Boatwright said, my name is Katie Trimbulak. I am a fourth-year medical student applying into obstetrics and gynecology, and I'm also a member of the Gold Humanism Honor Society. I had the pleasure of meeting all of you, I believe, yesterday at our orientation session, and it's an honor to be here today with all of you during this special moment in your journey to becoming physicians. So yesterday we discussed different ways to keep humanism alive during the preclinical years of medical school. In keeping with this theme, I would like to start by telling you all about this day three years ago. At the end of our week of virtual orientation, Instead of a white coat ceremony, my class had a welcome ceremony on Zoom. In the midst of some of the worst days of the COVID-19 pandemic, we could not all gather together. Being from Connecticut, I watched at home with my family while many of my classmates who had already moved away from their loved ones connected virtually, like we all had become accustomed to during the months of quarantine. About three months later, when restrictions had lightened up, we were able to finally get our long-awaited white coats. This time, we shared the day with each other. As our names were called, we went to the front lawn of the medical school in groups of four, all wearing matching Quinnipiac masks, and we were coded by our professors and preceptors. Having already bonded over two blocks of Foundations of Medicine and trying to figure out if Anki was someone's pet from home, a popular New Haven restaurant, or a flashcard program used for studying, we were happy to celebrate the day with one another. Finally, moving up the timeline to last summer, we had our recommitment to medicine ceremony before beginning our third year clinical rotations. We gathered at the medical school with both our loved ones and classmates. However, what was special about this day was that we announced our own names, committing ourselves not only to continue pursuing scientific excellence, but also clinical excellence for the patients that we would meet in healthcare for. 
we received a second white coat to add to our collection. In the months to follow, these white coats quite literally saw blood, sweat, and tears. They were my pajamas during my 24-hour call shifts. They were the coats that I wore the first time that I delivered bad news to a patient and their family, and the first time that I experienced patient death. But they were also my accessories when I performed my first newborn exam and administered my first vaccine, and the coats that I swiftly removed before I scrubbed into my first surgery and delivered my first baby. I'm recounting these moments because I believe each one represents a different aspect of what has helped me maintain humanism throughout my medical training in the hope that it will resonate with you all at some point over these next four years. It all comes down to connection. First, connection with your loved ones back home, here today. Your parents, grandparents, siblings, partners, and friends. Though some may be near while others are far, always remember those who have shaped you into the person that you are today. And the unwavering support that they have provided and will continue to provide you as you embark on this next phase of life. Pick up the phone when they call, no matter how much studying you feel you have left. Travel home when break time allows, and always accept a home-cooked meal when one is offered to you. Next, connection with your classmates in the greater Nutter community. Again, look around at the people sitting next to you. These are the people who will soon become your family away from home. They will start as your roommates and your study partners, but they will become your lifelong friends and your colleagues in the field. The genuine relationships and trust you build will serve as one of the strongest contributors to your maintaining humanism throughout the next four years. Share your challenges, mistakes, and joyful moments, and connect through your shared reactions and experiences. Be kind to one another, and remember to always make time for fun. Perhaps most important is connection with yourself. Medical school is hard. Between this moment right now and your graduation in 2027, there are 20 block exams and two board exams, countless standardized patient encounters and a capstone project to be done, but no pressure. If I could give you one piece of advice, it would be to be kind to yourself. Give yourself grace when you get something wrong, especially on your heart, lung, and kidney exam, and be proud of yourself with each accomplishment, no matter how small. Recognize your limits and continue to make time for the things that make you happy outside of medical school and know that you are now a part of a community that wants nothing more than for you to be successful. And we are always here for you when you need help so that you can in turn help and care for others. Last but certainly not least is connection with the patients that you will meet in healthcare for. Although there's time before you begin your core clinical experiences, you'll have opportunities throughout the first two years through MESH, CAS, and volunteering that will pull you away from the books and remind you of why you decided to come to medical school. You will share in some of the most vulnerable and intimate moments of these patients' lives, which is a privilege that comes with it great responsibility. For me, humanism is respecting the personhood of yourself and those around you, be they family, friends, classmates, patients, or strangers. It means acknowledging our differences and creating connections despite them, leading by example and advocating for yourself, each other, and your patients. Over the next four years, I urge you to create your own definition of humanism and to try to live by it each day, especially when you wear your white coats. I hope as you move forward, you always remember the importance of this day and the profound connection that it represents. Congratulations and best of luck as you begin your classes next week. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lou Bacano-Pasek. I'm the Senior Associate Dean for Education here at the Frank H. Nutter MD School of Medicine at Quinnipiac University. I'd like to join Dean Boisel and President Olian in welcoming the class of 2027 to our white coat ceremony. And I'd also like to welcome parents, family members, and friends and all who helped this talented and dedicated group of students reach this momentous occasion. QU Netter class of 2027, you made your decision to enter the medical profession in the midst of a pandemic. Your decision to don your white coat demonstrates tremendous courage and dedication, and your white coat continues to be seen 
as a beacon to all in need. The white coat is truly a powerful symbol. It defines us. It unites us. It gives us authority. It makes the promise of duty and expertise and confers the awesome responsibilities of our profession. The power of the coat is felt both by us and by those who see us wearing it. When you wear it, many will assume that you are already a doctor, ready to be trusted, to serve, to care, and cure. And while right now your diagnostic and therapeutic acumen is in its infancy, I echo what Dr. Angoff said. You've arrived with a lot. I know that you've arrived at QU Netter not only with the intellectual horsepower to become spectacular doctors, but also with a tremendous capacity for serving, caring, and compassion, all the right stuff to become outstanding physicians. Now, some of you have been looking to this, forward to this day with confidence, knowing that you will finally look the part that you've been preparing for. Others may feel uncomfortable. You may not feel like a doctor yet, more like an actor. You may even feel like an imposter. This is all normal. The coat is your new professional skin. You will grow into it. Each and every one of you belongs here at QU Netter and in coding you we affirm our confidence in you and we welcome you to the profession. Today, at this 11th Kiyu Netter White Coat Ceremony, our students will continue a Netter tradition, which we began last year. They will pre present themselves to our community, to our profession, announcing their entry and with it their commitment to joining the profession to serving our patients and to learning from our patients, their commitment to their new identity as a healer. At this time, I'm delighted to invite the QU Netter class of 2027 to introduce themselves. They will do this by telling us their name and their hometown, and they will then be coded by members of our faculty. So at this time, I'd like to invite up our first group of coders, and I'd like to invite Dr. Shay Gregg, our Chair of Surgery, Dr. Eileen Rosenberg, our Director of our Clinical Skills Coaching Program, and Dr. Robert Brown, our Clerkship Director for Internal Medicine. Hello, my name is Karim Amin, and I'm from Cairo, Egypt. Hello, my name is Abigail El Andrade, and I'm from Seymour, Connecticut. My name is John Angelis, and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. My name is Ekram Ihan. I'm from Alamuchi, New Jersey. My name is Daniel Baez. I'm from Yorkville, New York. Hi, my name is Nal Bajwa, and I'm from Sioux, New Jersey. Hi, my name is Christopher Baldwin, and I'm from Acton, Massachusetts.
My name is Chris Balich. I'm from New Haven, Connecticut. Hello, my name is Samuel Beidler, and I'm from Yardley, Pennsylvania. Isabel Ballon, and I'm from Los Angeles, California. Hi, my name is Kenzie Bishop, and I'm from Fort Collins, Colorado. Hi, my name is Calvin Bonner, and I'm from Middletown, Rhode Island. My name is Christine Brutus, and I'm from Queens, New York City. Hello, everyone. My name is Dominic Burns, and I'm from San Luis Obispo, California. Hi, I'm Caden Cannon from Sandy, Utah. I'm Alan Chai. I'm from Acton, Massachusetts. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Chernabelski. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Hi, I'm Amanda Cristiano. I'm from Mount Sinai, New York. Hi, my name is Esther Chung. I'm from East Brunswick, New Jersey. Hi, everybody. My name is Rochelle Clark, and I'm from the Bronx, New York. Hi, I'm Quinn Coughlin, and I'm from Plymouth, Massachusetts. My name is Gaurav Dungal, and I am from Coconut, Nepal, and Arlington, Massachusetts. Hi, I'm Kriti Devkota, and I'm from Providence, Rhode Island. Hi, I'm Chitani Danaretti. I'm from Falls Church, Virginia. Hi, my name is Sarah Dubois, and I'm from Ashburnham, Massachusetts. Hi, I'm Katrina Etz, and I'm from Melville, New York. Hi, everyone. My name is Ashley Francis, and I'm from Portland, Oregon. Caitlin Gallagher, and I'm from West Hampton Beach, New York. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Yashin Gao, and I'm from Johns Creek, Georgia. Hi, my name is Thomas Janeska, and I'm from Westford, Massachusetts. Hi, my name is Anusha Gopinath, and I'm from Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. Hi, I'm Ashwin Govindan, and I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Hi, everyone. I'm James Graham, and I'm from Glen Ridge, New Jersey. Hi everyone, my name is Nabiha Hawk and I'm from Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. Hi, my name is Saloni Harure and I'm from Basking Ridge, New Jersey. Hi, my name is Benjamin Hui and I'm from North Reading, Massachusetts. everyone, my name is Sin Ting Abby Hui. My hometowns are the Bay Area and Hong Kong. Hi, I'm Chibuza Rikwaza, I'm from Inwood, New York. Hi, I'm Vanessa Infante, and I'm from Monroe, Connecticut. Hi everyone, my name is Manav Jain. I'm from Somerset, New Jersey. I'm James Jaramillo and I'm from the Bronx, New York. My name is Hannah Jensen from Southbury, Connecticut. My name is Zania Johnson, and I'm from Bloomfield, Connecticut. Hi, my name is Alana Kaplan, and I'm from South Salem, New York. Hi, my name's Claire Keeney, and I'm from Greenwich, Connecticut. Azeen Kehani, and I'm from Sacramento, California. Hey everybody, I'm Josh Kemka, and I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. Hi, my name is Donna Kim, and I'm from Queens, New York. Thank you, Dr. Gregg, Dr. Rosenberg, and Dr. Brown. And I'd like to invite our next group of coders, Dr. Adam Weinstein, our Assistant Dean for Clinical Curriculum, Dr. Siobhan Hollander, our Course Director for our Clinical Arts and Science course, 
And finally, Dr. Renu Boatwright, Assistant Dean for Student Affairs. My name is Jake Laverdier, and I'm from Lincoln, Rhode Island. Hello, my name is Lyric Lee. I'm from Qingdao, China, and Boston, Massachusetts. Hi, everyone. My name is Rachel Lister, and I'm from Pelham, New Hampshire. I'm Jenny Lizarraga, I go by JJ. I'm from Tucson, Arizona. Hello, my name is Danielle Lenati, and I am from Franklin, Massachusetts. Hello, hello. My name is Sean Rajesh Surya, and I'm from Cupertino, California. Anna Macritus, and I'm from San Diego, California. Hi, I'm Sophia Mara, and I'm from Reston, Virginia. My name is Brian McDonough, and I'm from North Massachusetts. Go Mustangs! My name is Alina Malloy. I'm from Oceanside, California. Hi, my name is Ni Lob Nasrati, and I'm from San Jose, California. Hello, everyone. My name is Prashid Parikh, and my homes are Galway, New Jersey, and Gujarat, India. Hello, my name is Amber Parson, and I'm from St. Mary's, Georgia. Hi, my name is Neha Pashenker, and I'm from Bethany, Connecticut. Hello, my name is Mitsu Philogene, and I'm from Sharon, Massachusetts. I'm Jenna Frainer, and I'm from Santa Barbara, California. Hello, my name is Stephen Pong, and I'm from El Monte, California. Hi, my name is Anissa Prasad, and I'm from Westport, Connecticut. Hi, my name is Rachel Prince, and I'm from Chelmsford, Massachusetts. Hi, my name is Maya Poor, and I'm from Monterey, California. Hello, everyone. I'm Sebastián Quintana, and I'm from Miami, Florida.
Hello, my name is Dana Ragunanen, and I'm from South Ozone Park, Queens, New York. Hi, everyone. Hi, Mom. My name's Angela Rice, and I'm from Syracuse, New York. Hi, everyone. My name is Issa Rosenzweig, and I'm from Millbrook, New York. Hello, my name is Akira Jean Rufin, and I'm from Lagos, Nigeria, and Kissimmee, Florida. Hello, everyone. My name is Elena Santarosa, and I'm from Greenwich, Connecticut. Hi, everyone. I'm Avon Sapwadia. I'm from South Windsor, Connecticut. I'm Sabrina Sani, and I'm from Larchmont, New York. Hi, my name is Rachel Schlack, and I'm from Hyde Park, New York. Hi, I'm Sandy Asunath, and I'm from Queens Village, New York. My name is Priya Shukla, and I'm from London, England, by way of Boston, Massachusetts. Hi, everyone. My name is Lindsay Simoncini, and I'm from Rutland, Massachusetts. Hi, my name is Nora Singh, and I'm from Long Island, New York. My name is Julianne Chiyong Son, and I'm from Cypress, California. Hi, everyone. My name is Sangavi Srinivasan, and I'm from San Jose, California. Hello, my name is Samantha Strelzer. I'm from Fairfield, Connecticut. Hi, my name is Alana Sullivan. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. Hi, my name is Jana Sun, and I'm from Davis, California. Hi, I'm Annalise Sung. I am from Salt Lake City, Utah. Hi, I'm Rebecca Templeton. I'm from East Setauket, New York. Hi, my name is Anthony Tristani. I'm from Medfield, Massachusetts. Hi, I'm Divya Vimlapalli, and I'm from Whippany, New Jersey. My name is Tammy Wang, and I'm from Kaohsiung, Taiwan, and Queens, New York. Hi, my name is Kaylee Welliver, and I'm from Fort Lauderdale, Florida.
Hi, I'm Nicholas Wells, and I'm from both Exeter and Hopkinton, New Hampshire. Hello, my name is Maggie White, and I'm from Northampton, Massachusetts. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Reynaldo Jose Zamora Reyes, uh, Ray for short. Uh, I was born in Managua, Nicaragua, uh, raised in Miami, Florida, and continued my story in Long Island, New York. Thank you, Dr. Boatwright and Dr. Hollander. And please join me in a big round of applause for our newly coded class. Woo! <laughs> So at this time, I'm going to invite Dr. Adam Weinstein to lead you in the Physician's Pledge. Thank you. It's my great honor to lead the first year class of the QU Netter School of Medicine in the Physician's Pledge, which, a, which is a modern updated version of the Hippocratic Oath for current practicing physicians. I also invite any physicians in the audience uh, to join us in this pledge as well and read along with me. It's in the back of your program. Yeah, and, uh, and students, please stand up. <laughs> Thank you. As a member of the medical profession, I solemnly pledge to dedicate my life to the service of humanity. The health and well-being of my patient will be my first consideration. I will respect the autonomy and dignity of my patient. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life. I will not permit considerations of age, disease, or disability, creed, ethnic origin, gender, nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation, social standing, or any other factor to intervene between my duty and my patient. I will advocate for social, economic, educational, and political changes that ameliorate suffering and contribute to the well-being of my patients and the communities I serve. I will respect the secrets that are confided in me even after the patient has died. I will practice my profession with conscience and dignity and in accordance with good medical practice. I will foster the honor and noble traditions of the medical profession I will give to my teachers, colleagues, and students the respect and gratitude that is their due. I will share my medical knowledge for the benefit of the patient and the advancement of health care. I will attend to my own health, well-being, and abilities in order to provide care of the highest standard. I will not use my medical knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties, even under threat. I make these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. Congratulations. So as we conclude the ceremony, I want to first thank all of our speakers, President Olian, Dean Boisel, Dr. Angoff, and Katie Trimbalak. Uh, thank you for the inspiring words and the words of wisdom. Um, first, I mean, look at y'all. Uh, you look a little different. Yeah? Uh, take this moment. Take a mental note. Reflect on the words today. Reflect on the feelings and the meaning of the white coat. Uh, because, you know, you have a long journey and you've come from a long journey already. As I said, the white coat has a lot of meaning. 
and a lot of responsibility, but it is nothing without each individual that wears it and each patient that you take care of as you, as you heard today. I want to just take a moment to acknowledge all of the people here in the room that are here to support you. So why don't we give a round of applause for all the loved ones. Because I want to let them know that as you support each and every one of these individuals here, uh, we are also committed to taking care of them as they go through this journey um, as a community at the Netter School of Medicine. You're welcome. <laughs> the one thing that you heard today is that our 10th anniversary is coming up. This means that you are the 11th class here at the QU Netter School of Medicine. That means we are entering our second decade as a school and you are the first class to enter this decade. How cool is that? Yes? So as you heard today, you know, you're writing a new chapter of your story and the stories that you will tell. You're also bringing your paintbrushes here at the Nutter School of Medicine and helping us to paint a picture for the future of healthcare. And we are so honored to have you here. Uh, we've spent the last year getting to know all of you through your paper, and then we met you in person uh, through Zoom. But I could tell you, all of you in person together is an awesome sight, and we are more impressed by meeting with you and seeing you this week. I know this was a long week of, in, of uh, orientation. I call it base camp, right, before you actually start. Um, but I can say to everyone here and everyone in this room, we are just in awe of how amazing of a community that you've already built with each other and with us together. So as we look to Monday, which is your first day of classes, um, remember what Dean Boisel said on the first day, right? We are here rooting for you. Uh, we know already that you are a part of our community and we value you. And you've got this, right? And in conclusions, we've got this. So congratulations to the class of 2027. Uh, let's give them all a round of applause. So this concludes our ceremony. Um, and we would like to make sure um, that all of you know that we have a class picture first. So please don't run away. Let's uh, have a group picture together and then we can um, have a reception here at, in the back of the uh, stadium. All right, thank you everyone. Welcome everyone.